beginning in verse 30. Then they departed from there and passed through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know it. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed to the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise the third day. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. Then he came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? But they kept silent, for on the road they had disputed among themselves who would be the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve and said to them, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and the servant of all. Then he took a little child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Now John answered and said, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us cast out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who works the miracle of my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, assuredly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. My dear Lord, we've got things backwards so often. Lord, I confess that even in my own life, and I struggle to, to keep my own self in proper perspective. And so, Lord, it's with great difficulty that we come to your words today and we recognize that it's only with the help of your spirit that we can not even a hope of a chance to be obedient to you. The Holy Spirit, I ask that you want to work on our today. That you help us to put ourselves in proper perspective. We're not to think too less of ourselves. We're not to think too highly of ourselves. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The road to greatness is paved with humility. I thought that a great freaking title because these disciples are on a road. They're on a road. They're traveling. If you remember, in recent weeks, we saw the disciples cast, uh, try to cast a demon out of a uh, young man who were unable to, and they were involved in a dispute with the scribes, and, and Jesus comes up, and he cast the demon out of the boy, and there were some great lessons about faith in that, and about the different levels of faith that we can possibly have. But prior to that, Jesus was coming back down from the mountain of what I believe to be Mount Hermon, where he was transfigured before three disciples. Only three of them got to go with him. And they seen Jesus' glory just burst out, and they seen his face shine. Uh, it must have been an awesome experience. Well, they've come back down, they've been met by the crowd, and now Jesus has departed. And they're on the road. They're on the road to Galilee, to Capernaum. And Jesus' public ministry is coming to an end. In fact, I'm saying it's came to an end. Not that he's not involved in the public anymore, but Jesus is not seeking to be in public anymore. He's seeking to just teach these twelve. And there's a great, there's, there's some great challenges that lie ahead of them. And as they're on the road, and these disciples are having a discussion. And Jesus is going to have to teach them some lessons about what it means to be humble and to be a servant. What is humility? What is humility? What does it mean to be humble? See, I find that humility is such an elusive virtue that as soon as you think you've got it, you don't. As soon as you think you've got humility, you don't. Amen. You realize that here? I just want you to get that. Interesting. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi actually, quote, I claim to be a simple individual liable to err like any other fellow mortal. I own, however, that I have humility enough to confess my errors and to retrace my steps. Oh, really? God, he says, you know, he says, you know, I claim to be a simple individual, like many child children would claim to be. I claim to be a simple individual, come from a simple town, you know, a small town kind of guy, you know, and I'm not by no means great. I don't have a big income, and I'm prone to err. But Gandhi, said, Gandhi says this, like every other fellow, but I own, however, that I have, have humility enough to confess. 
confess my errors and to retrace my steps. Now, I'm glad he is willing to confess his errors and to retrace his steps. But what is this going to claim? I've got humility. I most likely don't. You know? It's possible to be humble about, it's possible to be proud about being humble. And to be proud about my religious virtue, my religiosity, my spiritual virtue, and to be proud and very proud about it. As a matter of fact, I'd say it's a very, very common occurrence within the church. See, when I finally achieve humility, I get proud of myself, thus going back to square one. Did you get that? Humility is not seen as a virtue in our culture, is it? It's not. As a matter of fact, it's not just our culture, it's all human cultures. Humility is not seen as a, uh, a virtue in our culture. However, false humility is. I'm going to make a distinction about that within the message. Humility, I mean, because none of us like to be around someone that's always arrogant and proud. I mean, you know, well, I should say none of us do, but generally a lot of us would just get annoyed with someone that's always talking about how great they are. But we'd be really, we wouldn't mind being around someone who was talking about how humble they were. We strive to be humble, but they talk about it. This false kind of humility. And the thing with humility is that it has a difficult time coexisting with self-awareness. How do I be aware of myself and who I am and maintain the humble frame of mind? Because humility within itself is the awareness of another. It's not so much an awareness of myself, but an awareness of others. Rick Warren, a quote, Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. I think that's a pretty good definition of it. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. You get the difference. Well, here is Jesus with his disciples, right? And they've had some mountaintop experiences for certain. Three of them, they were on a mountaintop, they see the glory of God revealed. That must have been. Man, that must have made you feel quite set apart. Think about this. Twelve disciples. He chooses three of them. You're one of them. You go up on the top of the mountain and you see the glory of God. You're just like, oh, Lord God, let us never leave this mountain. Oh, let us never leave this place. Let us build a temple for you and we will stay here and we will worship in your, in your glory. Let's not go back down to that valley of hard service. Let's stay up here in the mountain top of your presence. They have to go back down, don't they? The mountain top experiences only last so long. Most of their lives are lived in the valley of service. And they go back down and they're confronted with the other disciples who are in this dispute uh, about not being able to cast out this demon. And the disciples there were not prayerful about it. Because Jesus said this kind of demon only came out by prayer and fasting. And so they go there, and they're heading out, and here's Jesus, beginning in verse 30, he says, they departed from there and passed through Galilee. And he didn't want anyone to know it. See, Jesus is beginning his private ministry when he's focusing in on these 12 disciples because his time is coming where he knows he's about to leave. He knows that his time is not real. He doesn't have a lot of time out in front of him. And he's beginning to ignore the public now. And he's going to private with them. And he doesn't want them to know it. He wants to be in private, secret conversation with his disciples. And they go through Galilee. He doesn't want anyone to know it. And it says in verse 31 that he taught his disciples. The master taught them privately to teach them. And he teaches them that the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. And they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise on the third day. Well, what does that have to do with these lessons he's going to give to them about humility? 